Google isn't always the best at sharing. So barely one day after iOS 18 took center stage at Apple's WWDC keynote, it's back with some software updates of its own. The June feature drop just landed, and it's all about staying productive across Google's entire ecosystem of Pixel phones, watches, and tablets. So let's jump into what's new. Perhaps the most exciting development coming from the June feature drop is that Google is finally opening up Gemini Nano to the rest of its Pixel 8 series. Some eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed an AI core update a few weeks back that actually added the capability of supporting Gemini Nano, but now Google is flipping the switch and actually letting users in. Up until now, Nano was reserved for the most powerful Pixel 8 Pro, but both Pixel 8 and Pixel 8a users will be able to tap into the features thanks to their shared set of hardware. Of course, part of being a developer option means that some of Gemini Nano's features aren't quite ready for the masses, and you'll probably still have to wait till the end of 2024 before you can actually tap into everything that it's supposed to be able to offer. Right now, the best way to tap into Gemini Nano is with Magic Compose as part of Google Messages. Of course, there is a non-Gemini version of the feature that's available as far back as the Pixel 6 series, but the update actually brings the process on device, meaning that you can rewrite your messages and change your style without an internet connection and use one of Gemini's predefined voices. The other key Gemini Nano feature that's available right out of the gate brings Google's already powerful recorder to a new level. It's dubbed Summarize in Recorder and it does pretty much what it sounds like. We've been using Google's recorder to take notes and make transcripts out of briefings for years. And now Gemini Nano should take most of the guesswork and actually a lot of the legwork out of the equation. Essentially, for Pixel 8 and Pixel 8a users, the June feature drop means that they'll be able to use the summarization feature in Recorder. And for the Pixel 8 Pro, it just adds a couple extra features, meaning that you'll be able to take your potentially long transcripts and boil them down into a series of a couple easily digestible bullet points. On top of that, the summarized bullet points will be able to identify speakers, cut out most of the filler, and you'll easily be able to export them and the transcripts themselves into Google Docs. And with all of this newfound Gemini Nano power, you might find that your Pixel 8's display isn't quite big enough for some of the things you wanna do. Unfortunately, Google hasn't come up with a way to make your phone bigger as you pull it out of your pocket, but it is adding display port support, meaning that it's much easier to connect your Pixel 8 to a larger display. Of course, you're gonna have to have a compatible USB-C to display port cable, but that's pretty easy to pick up somewhere like Amazon or Best Buy. Also, if your TV already supports cast, you might not need to use display port very often, but it's gonna be more convenient for in-between displays like a computer monitor. One more productivity pickup from the June feature drop is called reverse phone number lookup. Now, it's again exactly what it sounds like, and it's maybe not as creepy as it might seem at first. I would imagine Google already knows that young people tend not to pick up the phone unless they already recognize the phone number who's calling. So this update allows you to quickly pull a phone number from your call log and search for its origin in just a couple quick taps. I can unfortunately count the number of times that I've I've tried to do the same thing and like copy and paste a phone number into Google search and accidentally found myself calling them back when I didn't really want to. So I'll be glad to have a much more anonymous way to check where a phone number came from. Of course, June isn't just about productivity. It's also about making it a little bit easier to find your phone if you should happen to lose it or it gets stolen. You're probably already familiar with Find My Device, which is available across tons of Android phones and tablets. But now Google is going to make sure that it works even if your Pixel 8 or Pixel 8 Pro is turned off. You, of course, have to opt in if you want to use Find My Device with your phone powered off because it requires extra location permissions but it's good news for those of us who tend to misplace things and bad news for would-be thieves. Oh, and it doesn't quite fit into any of the other feature categories for the Pixel 8 series, but Google is also adding HDR Plus support to Top Shot, which means that your phone will automatically pull out the best frame from one of your live images and apply the HDR treatment so that you don't actually have to go back through and sift frame by frame to find that perfect image. Switching to wearables, the June feature drop brings car crash detection to the Pixel Watch 2, as well as an update to fall detection when you're riding a bike. Honestly, car crash detection is a welcome, if probably long overdue feature for the Pixel Watch 2, as it really feels like something that should have been there since day one. After all, if you've ever had to slam on your brakes in your car, you know how quickly your phone can go flying or things can fall off of your passenger seat, making them much harder to reach in case of an actual emergency. But you know what won't go flying is something that's actually strapped to your wrist, which is why Pixel Watch 2 car crash detection seems like such a no-brainer for Google. It should work exactly the same way that it does on your phone, meaning that when your Pixel Watch thinks it detects a crash, 
you'll be prompted with a countdown as well as an option to jump right to emergency services or indicate that you're actually okay and it was a false alarm. Updating fall detection for your bicycle on your watch should make life easier too with it being better able to detect the difference between slamming on your brakes and if you actually fell and need help for an emergency. One more small update to the Pixel Watch is that you can use PayPal to make wireless payments directly from your wrist, like you would with any other credit card in your wallet. Google did mention that one a couple updates ago, but the feature is finally here. Moving on, this month's update to Google Home is a little bit of a double whammy with a major update to the Home app on Wear OS and a new Google Home Favorites widget for larger displays like your phone or your tablet. On Wear OS 1.3, the Google Home update adds the ability to create a customizable tile that you can use to control things like your thermostat temperature or dim the lights without having to navigate all the way through a much larger app. Google is also introducing home complications for its Pixel Watch faces which is kind of like a customizable tile, but it's right there on your watch face, meaning that you don't even have to scroll over. Should you decide that instead of quick controls, you need deeper controls over your smart home, the latest version of Google Home has those too. The updated app itself is more helpful for in-depth settings, like adjusting the humidity or repositioning a rotating fan right from your wrist. And as promised, there is a new Google Home Favorites widget, which is kind of like a switchboard for your smart home. It simplifies what could be a complicated menu of routines and settings and turns it into just a series of toggles that you can spend less time making changes throughout your home. And since we're on a bit of a Google Home streak, let's round out the June feature drop with one more addition. Doorbell notifications on the Pixel tablet. Yes, they've already been on Pixel smartphones for a while, but now they're coming to a larger display making it a little bit easier to use throughout your smart home. When your Pixel tablet is docked, it'll be able to provide you with more detailed notifications on who comes up to your Nest doorbell. You'll get different notifications and interactions if it's a person or an animal coming to the door, as well as different options if a delivery person drops off a package. Why this wasn't already available from the Pixel tablet from day one, we don't know, but it's better late than never. Now that we've covered Pixel phones, Pixel watches, and updates to the Pixel tablet, that just about does it for the June feature drop. So now it's time to start just furiously refreshing your devices and wait for the update to become available. In the meantime, you can read more about Gemini Nano and all things Google down below.